Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs, and I'm so grateful for you guys to be joining me here today. Um, what I want to do is talk about how to find the right thyroid medication for your body. All right, I'm going to be going over that in detail today. Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, there's a um, helpful graphic that I'm going to be using to explain this. Um, if you're listening to this uh, via podcast, you can go to my website. Um, www.restartmed.com and you can find um, and have access to this graphic as well if it'll be helpful for you. So let's let's dive in here. Uh, the question is, is there actually a right or best thyroid medication? Uh, the answer to that is eh, it's not really. Um, what it's what is more important is finding the right medication for you. Okay, and the way that I have broken this up is into three categories. The first one is who should be using natural desiccated thyroid or T4 plus T4, T4 plus T3 combinations of thyroid medication. The next section is who should consider using T3 only medications. And the final one is who should consider using T4 only medications. And yes, some people do better on T4 only medications, just to get that out there. And I'll talk to you a little bit about percentages and how that works out. And before we dive in, yes, I realize that which thyroid medication you are on may not be up to you entirely. Okay, so some of that will be, uh, will have to do with the philosophy of the physician that you are working with. However, I want to give you this information in hopes that it will help you in perhaps sparking a discussion with your provider um, or you know just bringing it up because some providers are more open to switching medications and trying new things out um, more so than others and so having this information can be very helpful for you. All right so first let's talk about patients who should consider using natural desiccated thyroid and if you don't know what natural desiccated thyroid is it's a it's a large grouping, um, and in that group, it, it, there are medications like Armour Thyroid, um, WP Thyroid, Nature Thyroid, West Thyroid, um, and a couple of others that have uh, various names. But essentially, what they are um, are combinations of T4 and T3 that are porcine derived. Okay, so I'm not going to be talking much about that. They are bioidentical, um, considered natural, etc. So, who should consider using these medications? Uh, first off. Anybody who has failed or not felt better on T4 only medications should consider using NDT. All right, and that is for many of you that that's this is the category that you fall into. All right, so so many of you that have not had success, and what I mean by that is a reduction in your symptoms, improved weight loss, um, you know things like that should consider this this switch. Um, those who have mild weight problems, and by mild weight I mean maybe 10 to 20 pounds overweight. So the and the reason I, I put a distinction here in terms of how many pounds is because the more weight and excess that you have on your body, the likely the, the higher your insulin is and the higher your leptin is, and that influences T4 to T3 conversion, which which means that you may do better on T3 only medications. Okay. But for the majority of people who just have an extra 10 to 20 pounds to lose, uh, NDT may be the best choice for these people. Um, another big category is those who have just recently been diagnosed with hypothyroidism um, and have never been on medication before. So just because you've, ju you've been recently diagnosed doesn't mean you have to start at T4. That's, that's the, the conventional thought um, among many providers and doctors is to just start somebody out on T4 because that's, that's how they've been taught. However, I, I find that many patients do a lot better if they just start right away on NDT and don't bounce around between many different medications. And then the final category is those with low free T, low free T3, and low free T4, um, and relatively normal reverse T3. Okay, and this comes back to what I mentioned before. The higher your reverse T3 gets, the lower your, your free T3 gets, um, you know, you can start to run into some issues that NDT may not be able to solve by itself. Not that it can't, but just it gets a little more complex at that point. Um, and what I will tell you is, is generally, if we, if we look at percentages in terms of my practice and who is on, you know, what medication, I would say about two thirds of people do really, really well on NDT um, by itself, you know, with the without the addition of T3, 
and and uh, so pretty good numbers we're talking about. If you if you had to guess and you weren't really sure where to start, NDT is a, a pretty reasonable choice. All right, so the next category is patients who should consider using T3 only medications. All right. And if you're not familiar with T3 only medications, I'm referring to medications. Um, the two meds that you might know of is, are lyothyronine and cytomel. All right, and then the other would be sustained release T3. Lyothyronine and, and cytomel can be um, purchased at any regular pharmacy. The sustained release T3 needs to come from a compounding pharmacy. But the the point is, these different medications have only T3 in them. Okay, so whereas NDT had a combination of T4 and a little bit of T3. In fact, that ratio is about 80% T4 and about 20% T3. T3 would be, T3 only preparations would have 100% T3. So considered, you can consider T3 only medications to be the strongest of the thyroid medications. All right. And so that's why I generally uh, reserve these for the patients who are the sickest. All right. And we'll go over what that means and and how to tell if you fall into this ca the, the, these categories. Uh, so first, first off, it would be patients who have high levels of reverse T3 um, or rip-roaring thyroid resistance. So I quantify high levels of reverse T3 as anything greater than 15 um, by standard testing um, or thyroid resistance, which you can get by calculating the uh, free T3 to reverse T3 ratio. Now, don't get lost in, in, in that calculation because it's, it's pretty simple. Basically, the lower your free T3 and the higher your reverse T3, the worse off you are. Okay, so I'll say that again. Free T3 is the good stuff. Reverse T3 is considered to be the bad stuff. So w you get into trouble when you have low amounts, of the good low amounts of the good stuff and high amounts of the bad stuff, right? Pretty straightforward, all right? Uh, the next thing is those with or patients who have leptin resistance. And leptin resistance, I've done other videos about leptin that you're welcome to read through if you'd like more information on that. Um, but what happens is as leptin levels increase, it inhibits the conversion of T4 to free T3 and favors the conversion of T4 to reverse T3. So it exacerbates this, this uh, reverse T3 condition that we're talking about and the high, that we were talking about previously. Also, the higher leptin resistance or the higher leptin levels get in the serum, the less reliable your serum test for thyroid more, as, a, as a function of thyroid uh, um, in your body, uh, it becomes less accurate. So uh, you want to watch out for that. The next section here, who, who should consider T3 only medication, medications are, are those who have diabetes, prediabetes, or insulin resistance. All right, and I have, I have talked in, in, in detail about how to diagnose these things. And for the most part, you know if you fall into one of these categories because your doctor has probably mentioned to you, hey, your blood sugars are getting a little bit high, or you know, maybe you're even on metformin. That would be your, doctor, your doctor's way of telling you you know, we, we got to get blood sugar under control. So diabetes, prediabetes, pre and insulin resistance all fall kind of on that blood sugar insulin spectrum. The higher the blood sugar, the worse off you are, generally speaking, but, but you know, not always. Um, the next group of patients that should consider T3-only medications are those who have very, very, very low body temperatures. All right, so you guys know who you are if you've had low body temps before in the past. Um, generally, the, the, you know, you'll... My, the patients who suffer from this issue will, will tell me that they've had low body temps and everyone tends to blow it off. It's definitely not normal. Um, your body temperature is a reflection of the amount of energy that your body is creating um, and producing on a daily basis, right? The more energy that you produce um, in your cells, the more heat that's generated, the higher your body temperature is, okay? And, and why this is pertinent to your thyroid is that the thyroid hormone is involved in the metabolism and therefore energy production of your body. So you can kind of see how this all fits together. Low body temps is a, another way of saying that someone probably has low thyroid hormone as well. Um, the next category that, that I include in here are those who have a personal history of bipolar disorder um, or, a, or a family history of bipolar disorder or uh, a family history or personal history of mental health um, disorders like strong depression or a history of suicide or suicide attempts in the family. These type of um, patients who fall into this category tend to have low levels of T3 uh, in the brain, and so they tend to do better 
um, on T3 only preparations. All right, and then the last the last category here um, would be those who have failed both T4 medications and NDT medications. All right, which is pretty straightforward. Um, generally, what will happen in many patients is that they'll start on T4. It may do something initially or may not. They'll switch to NDT. Same thing. May help them a little bit. May not. Um, and then, you know, at that point, if you failed both and you've gotten, you know, you've increased your dose considerably with both and you've given them an honest effort, you know, obviously the next step would be to take it up a notch and consider using a T3-only preparation. All right. Uh, and then the last category that I want to go over is patients who should consider using T4-only medications. And perhaps the majority of you are on this type of medication already. Uh, medications in this category include levothyroxine, um, Synthroid, Lavoxyl, Tyrosint, etc. So these are by far um, what most patients are on and they, they generally don't do very well. I would say in my practice I, I, I do have a couple people who do very well on T4 only preparations but we're talking a handful you know so realistically maybe two to five percent of my patients which I, I wouldn't say is a is a good sample of the entire you know US or whatever area that you're in simply because I tend to see the more complex cases but I would guess probably only 10 percent maybe 20 percent at max patients who do well on T4 only preparations um, but that that's kind of a guess and no one's ever studied that and that's just based off my own personal data um, but who should consider T4 only medications because perhaps you may fall into this category and maybe all you need is more T4 rather than switching medication alright so first is those who have or those who find NDT to be too stimulating um, th these would be the patients who you know they they every time they get a little T3 in their body they just get hypersensitive to it they may get jittery sensation they may have anxiety they may get heart palpitations or, or even over tachycardia which is a rapid heart rate most of the time when someone gets introduced to T3 they get a, a fluttering sensation which isn't a true tachycardia but more of a, a palpitation sensation all right so those who find NDT too stimulating, even in very, very, very low doses. Um, the next category, category would be those who have normal free T3 levels and normal reverse T3 levels. Okay, So some people out there, and this, this is kind of um, what I found, is they're just really, really good. I call them super converters. Okay, You can give these people T4 and they'll turn into T3 like you wouldn't believe. That's, that's not their main problem, whereas tons of other people have, have big issues with thyroid conversion and those are the people that tend to need the NDT and the T3 only preparations but not these so-called super converters as I refer to them they are this is the kind of patient who you'll give them level thyroxine and they'll start to develop uh, symptoms as if they you just gave them pure T3 right so they get the jittery sensation they'll get um, anxiety the heart palpitations they may even get tachycardia right so if you fall into that category it's more likely that you just need a higher dose of your level thyroxine than you do then, then you need to switch medications. All right, um, and then I've also included here, but we kind of already talked about it. Those who experience um, palpitations on T3 medications, regardless of the dose. So this would just be like you put someone on an Armour thyroid of, you know, 15 or, or a quarter of a grain, or even less, an eighth of a grain, and you know they just get heart palpitations. Um, so this this would be another patient to consider that in. Um, and then the final category is those who are just patients who are just extremely sensitive to all of the medications and supplements this is always something to consider and I, I should actually also add there those who are, are elderly greater than 70 years old um, you should consider this as well and so patients know when they fall into this category they will always tell their doctors I, re I react to everything doesn't matter the medication doesn't matter the supplement whatever it is um, if there's a side effect to that you can get I'm gonna get it right so those patients should consider the T4 only medication just because it's a more gentle approach. It doesn't mean that they can't have T3 added on later. It just means that I would probably start with T4 and then you can slowly increase, you know, one thing at a time and add it all in there. So this is um, again how I evaluate patients when I when they come in to see me, um, what I'm thinking about in my head. I will tell you the majority of my patients are on NDT um, NDT alone or NDT plus T3 or a T3 only preparation okay so that, that's definitely the majority although I do have a handful of patients you know maybe two to five percent who do well on T4 only medications and if they're 100% symptom free I don't really care what medicine you're on because you're obviously feeling better 
All right. Um, so, so that wraps that up. The other thing I wanted to bring your attention to right now was this thyroid conversion chart. So if you're thinking in your head, I'm going to take this to my doctor. I want to go, you know, what, what can I do? I want to switch medications. Um, I, I've already done a video on this thyroid conversion chart, but I just want to bring it to your attention right now because there are some nuances involved here that you should know about. And one of those is that when you, when you change your dose, use my recommended um, these, this conversion table here because um, I, I find that the other chart tends to be less accurate and most doctors when they switch you from let's say T4 to NDT they tend to underdose you in the process okay so if by using this you will not be underdosed and you, you it will help you get to the the dose that you need alright so just wanted to remind you that this is present um, and again you're welcome to check out that other video um, if you'd like for, for more information so that's all I have today, guys. I hope you felt that this was or found that this was very helpful to you. I try to come out with um, as much helpful information as I can. Um, I know I can't treat every single one of you one on one, but I can provide information that hopefully helps you when you take it to your doctor um, to get you on the right track. So if you have any questions or comments related to this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you're listening to this via podcast, I have a section on my website where you can give me some feedback on that as well. Um, otherwise, I will uh, talk to you guys soon.